Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, and welcome to the show. This is Ulle Didriksen, your radio host. Today, my guest is Leah Spriggs, and we are going to talk about how she helps her clients. Please tell us what you do as a real estate agent, Leah. I'm not a real estate agent certified. Okay. I don't work with real estate agents. I actually, I do, but not in a way that it's normally, you know, known. Mm. I'm an independent person. Okay. And I deal with international commercial properties. Mm. They go from land to hotels to multifamily to apartment complex to assisted living facilities, things of this nature. And it's a very, very large, vast uh, business. Mm. And it brings you to in contact with a lot of people, mm. but not necessarily a real estate agent. Okay. Also real estate agents, but not necessarily uh, me personally using or helping an individual per se. Mm. to purchase a home. I don't do that. Okay, you don't do that. So what uh, kind of uh, clients do you have? Is there a specific type? Like, could you name a client? Like, not a first-time home buyer, but like a uh, investor. But uh, I guess you have a type of customer that you work primarily with. Type of clients, like you have different types, right? My clients can be anywhere from a group of small individuals or individuals has some amount of money and they put it together to purchase a hotel. Mm. Or it can be a multimillionaire that sells his property and decides because it's tired of a multifamily and decides to invest in hotels. Or developers that purchase land to build and develop a center or a resort. Mm. This kind of client. I see. So if we can choose one of those clients to speak about, which one would you prefer? Because we want to cover their uh, misconceptions and uh, how you help them succeed, what they are looking for when they come to you. So if we could choose one of them, who would that be? Well, to not send out wrong information or misconceptions, like you just said, Hmm. I can't pick one particular one, and I'm explaining to you why. Okay. In the commercial part of the real estate, Mm. commercial is there to define all those properties that are not single-family homes or townhouses. Okay. There's a large property, and when you work with commercial properties, any one of those that I just mentioned fall into the commercial category. Okay. There is not one more than the other. They all come depending on the type of client that contacts you at that moment. Mm. It can be someone that is interested in multifamily. It can be someone that is interested in a piece of land. That someone who wants a big piece of land to build an 18 old golf course. Okay, I see. So you work with commercial properties in short. That's correct. Okay, so can you say something about how you help them in particular? Maybe you mentioned a bit what they are looking for when they come and ask for your help. But could you be more specific? What's what's for developing uh, land or build centers or a resort? Is there anything else they look for? Not necessarily, because every investor has their own line of preference. Hmm. You have two distinct categories. You have the emotional investor and you have the business investor. Mm. The business investor does not care. It gives you numbers. It's all about the numbers. Okay. And they give you every detail, the location, the the amount of capital, the amount of rooms or apartments, how much per apartment, how much he wants to spend to renovate the place. They tell you if they want it already up and running, if they want something to rehab Mm. that is empty at the moment, the variables are endless. Mm. Then you have the emotional investor. You have the one that decides finally to put his money to work and wants to buy something. 
That's right. probably one of the most difficult investors to work with because it is so hard to get them to commit because it was so much, it was so long that it took for them to collect that money. So it's a lot of soccer parts to go into it. Mm. So before they make a decision, they really have to feel it. It's almost like when the bride-to-be goes to buy a wedding dress. Yeah. She will continue to put them on until she will find the one that she will feel a bride in it. Mm. It doesn't matter how gorgeous the, the dresses are. If there is no connection to the bride-to-be, she's not going to buy it. Mm. And the emotional investor is the same thing. I see. So they are hard to work with. No, 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 no. They're not hard to work at all. Okay. I would say that it's highly interesting and very challenging, but incredibly rewarding. Mm. So it's challenging to work with that man, but it's rewarding. I got that. So you work with both business investors and emotional investors. Could you tell us more about what led you to this field like your story? Okay. So ever since I was 20, 25, Mm -hmm. I've always worked with high level professionals. Mm. I was the right hand of a CEO back in my 30s. Then I had a family. I had to kind of take a moment. Then I started in real estate. I was a model for 10 years. And then I was in the fashion world. Mm. Um, I had my own school. I was, yeah. That in Italy, because I'm Italian. Mm. Then I came to the States in 2000. 2000. Uh, I had my family. Then I started to step into real estate because I've always deeply loved the real estate world. I started actually as a loan officer, Mm. but it wasn't giving me the satisfaction that I was looking for. Then I proceeded to experience house flipping. That was a highly, it was a very hard job. I sent 5,000 emails in four months, followed up by phone calls and responses <laughs> to then find out that the majority of the agents that I spoke with the first time, after six, seven months, no longer were doing this. Hmm. It were no longer work. So it was very, very time consuming, highly stressful, and the same amount of energy that I put into Trying to create what I had in mind, I could not find professionals that were driving on my same path. Mm. And then I came across a gentleman, and uh, we spoke for a while, and he shared with me that one day he decided to enter the commercial real estate. And I'm like, really? So he was like, well, you should try, because the same amount of energy you put into doing this, it, you're probably going to put a little extra in there, but not even that much, but the results are phenomenal. Mm. I was like, why not? So I did, and I found what was making me happy. Mm. And I took it. Huh. That's a good story. Mm-hmm. So I was wondering, uh, what's the biggest misconception or myth people have about um, your business or the commercial real estate business in general? Is there anything? Well, in general, in real estate, doesn't matter if it's commercial or residential, maybe more in commercial. Mm-hmm. The biggest misconception is the people that contact you or talk to you and they tell you they have properties, that they actually do have it because 95% don't. Okay. So you really have to do your homework. Mm. You need to know the right question to ask. Mm. To pull the mask down to all these imposters, people mm. that are wannabes and they're trying to take advantage of you, your professionalism, your integrity, and they don't understand that if they were just honest mm. and say, I don't have any property, but I would love to work in real estate. Mm. What can I do to help you helping me? Mm. This is what I know. Would you be able to pay me? Would I be able to make some money? I will always respect anyone that is willing to work to earn a few dollars or extra dollars for that matter. Mm. But people that are there to deceive professionals or just any other human being in general, Mm. I highly despise them. And there is a high percentage, 95% of people in real estate, in commercial real estate, they're just there to pretend to be what they're not. Wow. I didn't realize that. 95%. Mm-hmm. Wow. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> but don't forget that what I say is based on my experience. So I can only speak for myself. Mm. Of course, somebody else could have had other type of experience, hopefully much better than mine. I can only speak for my experience, what I encountered, and what I had to deal with, and the damage control that I had to do, and all that came with it. So hmm. I can't speak for others, only for myself. Okay, I got that. So how do you deal with when you encounter? That sounds like a lot, uh, 95%. How do you uh, deal with it? Like, uh, how do you find out and what do you do? Well, unless you work with a mentor, you pretty much yourself talk. You teach yourself. Mm. And how do you do that? When you keep talking to people and you keep with you realize that, yeah, and you talk for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, six months, and nothing happens. At the end, when you think you're close to contact, or be able to seek with the, the principal, either or, and you realize that that is not there, and the person said, well, hold on, I have to get somebody else on the phone, then you start realizing that at first you think, that, oh, it was just that person. But then it happens the second time, the third time, the tenth time, the hundredth time, then you start to realize that in order for you not to risk your life away, mm. you have to get a notebook and write down the right questions to ask. Mm. To the person that contacts you to know if it's a real deal or if it's not. Mm. And if it's not, you just be cordial and very kind. You thank them for their time, but you just are you're not interested. Unless ABC, they were able to provide ABC. What did you call it, ABC? Information that refers to the property that this person allegedly offers you. It says, I need you to sign my NDA. The NDNCA, the non disclosure, non circumvent mm. agreement. Yes. If people don't do that or are not willing to do that, well, that's the first flag. Mm. Then the second question NDNCA, non disclosure, non circumvent agreement. Mm. And then you go on and ask other questions. So I guess this could be something to learn for new commercial uh, realtors, I guess, that because you have a lot of experience and this would be something they could learn uh, from you or uh, learn by your experience, so to speak. This is more applicable to a commercial real estate because real estate agents certified, they have their office, the broker has already contracts that a private citizen will have to sign prior to any agent to take them out to see any property. So that's already legally done. Mm. Uh, When it comes to the real estate commercial side of it, it's a different story because you don't have to be certified to work in commercial real estate. You can, but it's not necessary. When you are not certified, that's when the problems come into play. I see. I guess this is perfect tips for newbie investors that like you are when you first started out. I'm not sure what to call that occupation, like a commercial real estate investor or a realtor. No, no, you cannot because I'm not certified. I don't have the certification. Mm. I am a, I'm an independent professional mm. that operates and cooperates with others in the commercial real estate world okay people that want to do the same thing that you do like what you do what would you call that kind of person he would be a a newbie right exactly what i said when you are not an agent you don't get commission Mm. you cannot it's against the law okay and an agent cannot pay you if you're not certified Mm. it's against the law you can get a referral fee Mm. So in a deal that could generate $200,000 as a referral fee, some states impose that the referral fee is $50 mm. or $100. So, of course, I don't go against the law. So I have my own company mm. and I charge fees for my services. Yeah. So what's your unique magic, the thing that you do differently than other competitors in your market is there something unique you do yeah i'm honest honest yeah so that's uh, 
honestly, is that a scarce uh, commodity in your market? Oh, it's pretty much non-existing. And I'm not greedy either, which is very rare also. Whenever I cooperate or help a client, his or her money are will be treated just as it was mine. Mm. Because what I do and the results that comes out from my work is the extension of me. And I don't want that to be nothing but perfect. Mm. Okay, that's good. What would be your best piece of advice for clients who want to find their own commercial property by themselves without your kind of uh, service? I don't think you can. Okay. Always be represented or cooperate with someone that they trust. Mm. And if they don't have it, ask mm. people that they trust. Or just make a few phone calls and ask questions and get the feel of it. Most of the time, you can tell if the person you're talking to is being honest with you. Don't mm. be in a rush to invest your money somewhere. If that's something that is a dream or something that in the future someone wants to uh, do, start now to go cancel it. Mm. Don't wait until the last minute. Just get the feel of it. See who is out there that you could potentially be able to trust and work with. Mm. Start talking. Ask questions. Say, hypothetically, in a year, I would like to get in. Say, what is the best way to go? Mm. What would you do if you were me? If this was your money, how would you invest them? Mm. Just interview the people that you talk to and try to figure out if their answers are truthful. Mm. How do you find that out? Well, talk to more than one person. Talk mm. to three, four, five, and then get the average answer you get. And most of the time, it's just like when you have a disease. You don't go to one doctor. You go two, three, four, five to get different opinions. And then you match the ones that have the same idea about it. And mm. then most of the time, it could be the right one. Okay. Yes. So to wrap uh, this up, how can someone who needs to find a commercial property find out more about you and how you can help them? Well, they just Google my name and will come out on LinkedIn. They can go on my page, look at the properties that I deal with, the inventory that is available right now, my connections, and, and if they still have questions, my number is there. They can always call me. Okay, that's perfect. So this is the last question. As a closing, is there anything you feel that is important for people to know that we may not have covered? There is no get rich fast. There's no such a thing. Are you spirits on my skin? There is no elevator for success. Hmm. You've got to take the stairs. The stairs. There is no way around it. Okay. So it takes a longer time, but it's the road to success to take the stairs. There is literally, there is no elevator put to success. You've got to take the stairs mm. one by one. And the stairs are long. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> I see. That's a good piece of advice. Yes. Thank you, Leo, for your time and for sharing these insights with us. That's it. Have a good night. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.